Hi everybody and welcome to our first video of our new topic. Um, this topic is quite wordy, it's called the Psychobiology of Altered States of Awareness and this video is going to provide an introduction to altered states and also sleep. So the key idea that we're covering today is quite general, it's the first of three um, and it's just that our level of awareness is constantly changing and being aware of that process. The area of learning that we're covering more specifically is circadian rhythms and really just an introduction to um, this topic. Okay, so let's just start with what an altered state of awareness actually is. So this is that human condition of experience in which, you know, sensations, perception, cognition and emotions are altered somehow. Okay, so within this topic, we look at two altered states of awareness. We look at sleep and also stress. And we look at these from the biological level of explanation, which is why it's called the psychobiological, um, psychobiology, sorry, of altered states of awareness. Okay, so sleep. You guys, as year 12s, definitely know the importance of sleep and how good it is for you. Um, but make sure that you have these notes with you as well. So really important to maintain mood, memory and cognitive performance. That's why teachers harp and harp on you um, about getting enough sleep. Um, it's really important for restoring and repairing cells um, to strengthen the immune system, endocrine system, which is your um, hormones. It eliminates waste from your muscles, which is why uh, elite athletes are often told to get minimum nine hours sleep every night. Um, and basically through evolution, we've actually evolved to sleep in order to conserve energy and actually to protect um, us as well. Okay. Um, and I guess it's important to recognize here too that that scientists and psychologists are still investigating why we sleep and what actually happens while we are asleep. So um, we used to think of sleep as this really passive state of relaxation that we didn't really do much and it was just, you know, a bit of a time out for the body. But I mean, as we've learned more about the brain and as technology is kind of caught up, we've learned that this is actually a very active time um, for your body and your brain in order to do some of these things. Okay, so circadian rhythm is one of our big keywords of this topic. Um, I have all of the um, keywords in blue and these have definitions. And a circadian rhythm is the biological 24-hour cycle. Note that this is cycle, not clock, to which most physiological processes are set. So throughout the day, your body has a bit of a rhythm um, in which it does things. So things like sleeping, um, your body temperature, your hormone levels, urine flow, um, and blood pressure, etc. These are all monitored um, through the circadian rhythm. So obviously, um, you're used to falling asleep at a certain time, um, etc. Okay. Linked to this idea is the circadian clock. Okay. Now, um, this controls the circadian rhythm. Okay, and this is actually the informal name for the collection of cells located in the suprachiasmatic nuclei. We call this the SCN for short, and this is located in the hypothalamus in the brain. So I've given you quite a detailed diagram here for you to have a look at, um, and you can see the SCN labeled there on the top left. Um, you obviously, you're not going to need to reproduce this in a test, but it's just interesting to kind of see where it sits in relation to other things as well. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is quite cool. It's the process of how your body wakes up in its natural state. So obviously we have things like alarm clocks and, you know, parents or whatever, whoever's waking you up in the morning. We have all these artificial things, but if we were to remove you and maybe send you camping for a couple of months and your body would return to its natural state, this is how it would actually wake up. So the first step is that light hits the retina in your eye. Okay. Um, most of the time, this is that blue light rather than a yellow light. You'll notice um, when you wake up in the morning that a light has that real blue quality. And this is why they say that your phones are actually quite detrimental because they release that blue light and you'll see what happens next. So once the light hits the retina in your eye, you can see it traveling through the front of the eyeball to the retina. Um, this message is sent to the SCN in the hypothalamus. And again, you can see the hypothalamus labeled there in the middle. Now this SCN 
then sends the message to your pineal gland and this stops the secretion of melanin. Okay, really important that you have this process written or even preferably drawn in your book because it is quite detailed. Um, and really important, you want to highlight, underline, put stars next to this, that this message stops the secretion of melanin, melatonin. Sorry. All right, so melatonin actually makes you sleepy. So if you're waking up, you want that message to stop that secretion. And this leads to you being awake. Okay, so a little bit more about melatonin. This is actually a hormone. And like I said, it tells our body whether it should be awake or asleep. So the more melatonin that you have in your body, the sleepier you are. Really important not to get that confused. Okay, and obviously the, the less melatonin you have, the more awake you are. And I've put some bottles down the bottom here showing you that you can actually buy melatonin. If you are someone who has trouble sleeping, perhaps you've even been diagnosed by a doctor, um, you can actually buy melatonin, which you would take around bedtime and actually is supposed to help you get to sleep as well. All right, so this is it for our first video. This has really provided, I guess, an introduction to the topic and an introduction to sleep. I will see you for the next video, guys. Bye.